Hello everyone. So this video is going to cover 9-3, which is called Solving Quadratic Equations. Now the basic idea here is that quadratic equations can be written in standard form, and standard form is where this begins. So standard form is going to look like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And uh, keep in mind, this was discussed in class, but just to put it in the video, sometimes the equation is not already given to you in standard form. So you will need to rearrange it using the commutative property. So as you can see, the 2x squared was not the first term written down, but it does have the x squared term, meaning 2 represents a. So uh, you use the commutative property, you switch the first two terms around, and you now have your answer in standard form. All right, there's some vocabulary that goes with this section. Very basic idea. It's conceptual. This is not doing as much number crunching as much as just understanding a simple concept. There is something called the zeros of the function. And the zeros of a function are the x-intercepts of the graph. So basically, that looks like this. You have your coordinate plane with your parabola. As you can see, the parabola is crossing the x-axis at those two points. These two points, right here and right here, these are the zeros of the function. Another name for the zeros of the function, the roots of the equation. Both of these terms mean the same idea. The roots of the equation are the solutions to the equation. So maybe you don't have the graph drawn, so you wouldn't exactly call these zeros if you don't have the graph drawn. Maybe you just have an equation written out. Well, it's called the roots of the equation when you just have the equation written out. But if you have the graph drawn, like we do over here, you refer to the solutions as the zeros but they mean the same thing. These two ideas mean the exact same thing. They are equal. Uh, so what these points are talking about are uh, right here. At these points, the y value is going to be 0. So if that wasn't clear before, the reason why these are called the zeros of the function, well, at these points, the x-intercept has a y value of 0. The, uh, the parabola is crossing the x-axis at zero. That's why these points are called the zeros of the function. And I'm repeating this a bunch of times because it's a major concept you need to know for chapter nine. The zeros of the function are also called the roots of the equation, and they are the points where the parabola is crossing the x-axis. And at those points, the y value will always be zero. Always, always. So, oh, and by the way, in 9-4, you will learn how to do this without looking at the graph. Uh, that is where you will take your, uh, your, you'll take your equation in standard form, and you will set it equal to zero, like you can see right down here. Uh, but that will happen in 9-4, the next video. So if you were to be taking notes right now, uh, the question you would want to write down, I'm, I'm kind of editing it here, how many solutions are there in each equation? Uh, so there are three situations you're going to be in with these parabolas. Either the parabola is crossing twice, it's crossing the x-axis twice, meaning there are two solutions. So um, th as you can see, here is the graph, and they have already graphed it right here. I am not going to walk through the procedure of graphing this. That is done in another video. We are just talking about the concepts. This parabola is crossing the x-axis twice. So that's why there are two solutions. The parabola in the middle is touching the x-axis once. So it's not really crossing twice because as you can see, the vertex of the parabola is touching the x-axis, meaning there is only one solution in this case. And then lastly, we have a parabola that is not crossing the x-axis at all. That means there is no real number solution. In Algebra 2, you will learn about imaginary solutions. But for now, all you need to know is that because this parabola does not cross the x-axis at all, there are no real number solutions. Down here at the bottom, though, let's do some arithmetic to solve some equations. 
your zeros were represented right here. It is a very visual question. But when you have an equation, well, you can solve the equation using inverse operations. Let's do, uh, let's do part A. So you would add 16 to both sides, which would be the inverse operation. And then you would be left with x squared equals 16. You would square root 16 to get x alone. And uh, you would get 4 or negative 4. That means you have two solutions to this quadratic equation. Remember, 4 times 4 is 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16. So uh, parts B and C, if you need to pause the video right now and work those out, I'm going to do the solutions in a moment. Um, but I would recommend you just pause and quickly work those out so you can see if you already got it. Uh, so just pause. All right, so part B and part C, uh, you would subtract 6 from both sides, and you would get 3x squared equals negative 6. And then you would divide both sides by 3, and you would get x equals negative 2. However, when you have x, e x squared equals negative 2, you cannot square root that. You cannot square root a negative number. If you were to square root a negative number, well, that means some number, like the square root of 2, uh, well, let's just look at something like uh, the square root of 16. So 4 times 4 is positive 16, and negative 4 times negative 4 is also positive 16. Uh, when you square root a number, you're asking yourself what number times itself gives you the number under the square root sign. And the only way you're going to get negative 16 is if you do 4 times negative 4. But that violates the rule of square root. It has to be the same number multiplying itself. So uh, your, your negative numbers do not have real square roots. They have imaginary square roots, which you will learn uh, near the end of the school year. Part C, you would add 25 to both sides, and you would get x squared equals 0. So you would uh, square root x squared, and you would square root 0, but the square root of 0 is 0. There is no plus or minus happening here. There is only one solution, x equals 0. All right, so uh, here are some practice problems. And on the slide, after this slide, you're going to see all the solutions to 8 through 34. So uh, I'm going to work out a few of these for you if you need me to. Otherwise, pause the video right now and work out as many of these as you like. I'm going to work out a few of them. And then on the next slide, you are going to see all the solutions to these problems. So some of you have been asking for more practice inside the videos. So I'm going to go over a few of these right now, but you will see all the solutions to the problems that you are looking at right now on the next slide. Starting with number eight, it is asking us to solve each equation by graphing. So just to show you the basic idea with graphing, I have set up a T table. I'm going to plug in negative 2 all the way to positive 2. I'm going to plug in negative 2 to positive 2 into this function. So I'm going to be squaring whatever the x value is and then subtracting 9. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Minus 9 is negative 5. And that same procedure is followed to get the rest of those y values. So um, I'm assuming you know how to calculate all those coordinates. I'm also assuming you know how to draw a coordinate plane. As you can see, I am drawing more negative values in the coordinate plane because the y values are very, very negative. Uh, so your parabola will look like this. Negative 2, negative 5 would be right down there. And then negative 1, negative 8. 0, negative 9. 1, negative 8. 2, negative 5. And then you would connect your dots like that. But we are being asked to figure out if there are solutions, which means we need to be looking for the zeros, which means we have to be looking for the x-intercepts, where the parabola crosses the x-axis. And if I were to extend the parabolas a little bit, you would see that it crosses at negative 3 and positive 3. That makes perfect sense. If you take negative 3 and you square it like the function says, well, negative 3 squared is 9, and 9 minus 9 is 0. Same thing with positive 3. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 9 is 0. So you get plus or minus 3 for the first answer. Um, you don't always need to graph these, though. If you want to use inverse operations, that'll get the job done. So let's just look at 15. 
Uh, you would subtract 5 from both sides. You would get x squared equals 0. And you could square root both sides. Uh, the square root of x squared is, is just x. And the square root of 0 is 0. So as you can see, there is, again, no plus or minus situation. We have just one solution in this case. Uh, so I'm going to work out 20, 27, 22, and 32 in a moment. If you are not interested in doing all of these problems, then maybe just do uh, those four, and you'll at least be getting a good taste of what, uh, what this topic has to offer. So pause the video if uh, you don't want to do all of them, if you just want to look at a few of those being solved. All right, number 20. Uh, basically, you just square root both sides, and 81 could be plus or minus 9. So n equals plus or minus 9. 22, you would add 196 to both sides, and then you would take the square root, and you would get 14, plus or minus 14. With 27, you would do the inverse operations of adding 20 to both sides first, and then you would divide by 5. You would get q squared equals 4, and then you would square root that, and you would get plus or minus 2. And then lastly, with 32, it says uh, find the length of the side of a square with an area of 169 meters squared. A square has four sides that are all equal, so you would know that the base and the height are both x. And the area formula would be base times height. So in this case, we have x times x. x times x is x squared. So basically, since you know the area is 169, well then you could just set that equal to x squared. And then you square root both sides, and you would get plus or minus 13. All of this stems from the idea of understanding that a square has four sides that are equal. And I'm assuming you know and understand how to use the area formula for a square. All right, so here are the solutions to everything on the previous slide. And here's a very brief summary of what we just talked about. Uh, quadratic equations, they can be graphed in order to solve them. If it crosses twice, if it crosses the x-axis twice, you have two solutions, so on and so forth. You can graph these equations in order to solve them. You just have to look at where they cross the x-axis. The solutions are called roots or zeros, and they are located on the x-axis, where y is zero. Remember, these are also known, that's what AKA stands for, also known as, the x-intercepts. So what we're basically looking for as our solutions, if you have your parabola and it crosses the x-axis twice, then you have two solutions. If it crosses once, you have one solution. And if it doesn't cross at all, then there are no real solutions. All of these ideas will be discussed further in class. Hope you at least have a basic idea about it. And uh, by all means, ask me questions if you have them. I'll see you guys in class.